you might encounter some problems in the back of your text or in a chapter or on an exam or something. It has to do with the superposition of magnetic fields. So we thought we'd just sort of look at a couple here to uh, see the idea. So, of course, the superposition means uh, two, mag field, two magnetic fields are going to be adding together, but, of course, you need more than one magnetic field to ha for that to happen. So what it looks like then is you'll have more than one magnetic field system near each other in order to have superposition. So, for instance, here's a wire carrying a current towards us, and here's another wire carrying a current towards us. So one question would be, what would the magnetic field be right here? What would that magnetic field be? Well, and in the case of superposition, what you do is just sort of pretend the other wire isn't there and see, well, what does this wire contribute to the point? Thumb in the direction of current, curl around like this. This wire is going to contribute a magnetic field up like that at that point. How about the other wire? Well, fingertips in the direction of current coming out, curl it down like that. This wire is going to produce a magnetic field down at this point. So right here at the center, these two wires are going to produce no net magnetic field. It'll be zero. And of course, as you move, say, on the axis of the wire, say, over to a point like this, the red arrow is going to be a bit stronger than the blue. It'll be in the same direction for sure. The right-hand rule doesn't change, but the red arrow is going to be larger because you're closer to that wire, and the blue arrow is going to be smaller because you're farther from that wire. So you'll get sort of a net upwards magnetic field here, and of course the opposite holds as you go towards the other wire. This is going to have the larger magnetic field there because you're closer to that wire, still down, right-hand rule still holds, and this magnetic field will be smaller and up, so you get sort of a net downwards magnetic field there, and that's what we mean by superposition. And if you really needed to, you can now invoke the equation for the magnetic field of a straight wire to actually figure out what the exact magnitudes and so on and so forth would be. So that's sort of the idea here, superposition. Here's another case here where maybe a wire has a current going away from us, and here's a wire with a current coming at us. Suppose we went right to the middle again. What would happen? This is the currents coming out at us, so this one's going to produce a magnetic field down like this. And this has this current going into the bore, so I'll put my thumb in the direction of the current, curl around down like this. This will also have a magnetic field down like that. So you see, unlike the wires that are carrying current in the same direction, when the wires are carrying current in opposite directions, like this, you get a superposition here. So the B here at the center is enhanced for sure, something like that for two wires in there. Um, so the problems can sort of go on and on. Like, for instance, you could have a case like this where you have a loop of wire like this. Everyone loves that loop so thicker in the front. I'll try to draw it a little thin in the back there like that. So here comes that axis of the wire in like that. And what we know now is we run a current down the loop in this direction here. The magnetic field at this point is going to be over like that. Okay. So say we're a distance a from the loop like that, and say just coincidentally, we also have a wire down here like this. Uh, let's say the wire instead is maybe making, yeah, right here. Wire is that has a current going into the page, and maybe it's a direction, a distance B from that same point. Well, this arrow here, this black arrow, is the magnetic field due to the, the loop right here. What about the wire? Well, finger thumb in the direction of that current into the page, wrap around like that. Looks like this one will produce a magnetic field. The wire will, will produce a magnetic field this way through the point, and so the red is B due to the wire. The black one right in here is B to the, due to the loop, and you can see there's a point here with two magnetic, magnetic fields in it, so of course they will add together. So you could certainly calculate the magnetic field, a distance A from a loop, and a distance B from a wire, and vectorally add them. Looks like we'll get some reinforcement in there. That's what we mean by B field superposition. So if you really have a handle on the loop, the wire, and maybe even the solenoid, and suddenly these systems come together into one picture, their B fields will superimpose. But if you're ready with your right-hand rule and you understand the equations, you should be ready to go with these things. How about a couple of loops like this? How about a loop that looks like this? So again, nice and thick in the front, indicate the edge that's towards it like that. So here's like a big axis like this, and we'll draw another loop over here. Nice and thick in the front, sort of going back that way. Let me draw a little... Give us a little bit of perspective in there. Sort of goes behind, and there's that axis coming out like that. So these are the two loops right here. And, you know, just for the sake of simplicity here, we'll draw the currents coming down along these edges like that, and that's what the magnetic field is right there at the center point. Okay? Well, what do we get? The leftmost loop, as we know by now, will contribute a magnetic field sort of that way like that. I can put my fingertips in the direction of the loop, and my thumb like this, and my thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field, or fingertips in the direction of current, rather. And I can do sort of the same thing over here. I can put my fingertips in the direction of this current right here, and I'll get a magnetic field over this way. And so this hoop's going to have 
contribute a magnetic field this way and that way over there like that. Likewise, the, the leftmost loop will have a magnetic field also over here, but we're not concerned with it because it's not in our superposition point. But of course, right here at our superposition point, it looks like we have a, an enhancement of the magnetic field. We have a very strong magnetic field that would be twice either loop alone right there at the center point. Okay, you can extend the system now. Let's just re take away that uh, current for a minute here. Let's just reverse the direction of the current in this loop over here. So let's get that arrow off there and just reverse it like this. So instead now, let's just make the current going down like this. There's the current now. So if I run my fingertips in the direction of the current like that, like this, it goes around, you can see that that right loop is going to produce a magnetic field, which is exactly opposite of this one right here. So what you'll get in this reach on here, right there at the center point, is a B equals zero. They'll cancel each other. And uh, so this is one way of making sort of a zero magnetic field environment, at least along an axis that goes like that. And sometimes these two coils put together here, I'll call it Helmholtz coils. And you see them in laboratories and that sort of thing where someone is trying to control the magnetic field at some localized region in there. And so we'll just sort of wrap this video up, but that's exactly what I'm talking about when we have B field superposition, that can you take combinations of wires and loops and loops and wires and stuff, visualize their fields, and do a magnetic field superposition at a certain point in space. Now, we simplified in this video here. We only looked at superposition cases where it's only on one axis, but of course the magnetic field can be on different axes and things like that. So we'll just wrap up the video by looking at one more sort of two-dimensional case like that. So one of the two-dimensional cases we'll look at is, again, we'll go back to the two wires. Here's a wire here, say two wires in the same direction. And let's just say we go to a point up here. We like to know what the magnetic field is, a point like that, above the wires, like that. Uh, well, you just use your right-hand rule again. Here, my thumb is in the direction of this current here, and we sort of wrap through this point. So there will be a magnetic field sort of down like this. This is due to the right wire. Again, there's a big circle going all the way around the wire, and at this point, that circle is sort of going down to the left. How about due to this wire here? Well, up like this, again, another circle, big circle going around. And by the time that circle makes it to the point like that, there'll be an arrow pointing like this. So the magnetic field, so this is B here due to the left wire. Left wire. So what you're left with doing here is doing a magnetic field superposition of the B field due to this wire and the B field due to this wire at this point. Looks like to me if you did a vector superposition, the Y components will cancel. It looks like there'll just be an X component to the left. And so I think the net magnetic field is going to be something like this blue wire right here. So the net magnetic field will just be a blue one over to the left like that. And again, that's what we mean by superposition. And certainly, if there was some geometry in here, like you knew the spacing between the wires, like maybe that was D, and this is some height right here, and you're right here at the perpendicular uh, bisector there, you could use the equation from wire to really nail down exactly what this net, net magnetic field would be including its magnitude and direction. But, once again, that's what I mean by B-field superposition.